What's up guys, my name is Bart Comar and these are my brothers. Today I'm making this OC station so that hopefully their faces don't burn off. You guys ready? Let's Ride go! A big song. All right, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Okay, so what is OC and why am I making this thing? I've been in the Army Reserves as a military police officer for the last 11 years. And one of the training qualifications we have to go through is exposure to OC, which is the military version of pepper spray. And let me tell you guys, it is by far the worst, the most painful thing that I've ever gone through in my entire life. And if you don't believe me, stick around to the end of this video and watch the soldiers get sprayed and then have to endure the excruciating pain as they go through a course spitting up bodily fluids, crying, and fighting through the pain. Oh, Sergeant! More pressure, Rabbit! More pressure! It hurts so bad they can stop it! <laughs> I guarantee you that's what's gonna happen. Just you watch. So to help my brothers and sisters who are going through this, I am making them a decontamination station to try to wash some of that agent off their face. It's a fairly simple design using one inch PVC for the main supply and two shower heads that are reduced from three quarters of an inch, which will hopefully give us a little bit more pressure. To connect the PVC to the water supply, I'm using a garden hose adapter that I got in my big box store. That way it can be used anywhere there's an outside spigot. Then to connect all the parts, I'm using a primer and glue combo that fuses all the parts together and makes it watertight. This is the same exact method that's probably in your home right now, running all your waste and vent lines. I also wanted to incorporate some ball valves, which will allow me to control the unit and direct water wherever I want it. Then I taped all the moving parts, gave it a coat of primer, and it was time to see if this thing actually worked. All right, I'm gonna go turn on the water and then We'll open up these valves and see what happens one by one. Oh, here we go. Whoa, whoa. You wanna stick your face in there? No. Test it hurts, Sarge, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next we're gonna be giving this thing a facelift. We're gonna be painting it, making it look training worthy. And we'll put a couple of words on there just to make sure that the guys are motivated enough. And finally, I'm gonna make some new saw horses for this thing because they need to be able to collapse and be stored, so they gotta be as small as possible to carry this thing. So, let's get to it. I went online and looked at some pictures of collapsible saw horses. I found one that gave me some inspiration, but some design changes needed to be made so that it fit exactly what I was trying to achieve. And that's a sawhorse that's fully collapsible, doesn't need a strap to hold the base, has interlocking parts with easy to use knobs, but is still strong and mobile. So, can't find anything like that, I'm gonna be making my own. I started off by making a square guide on my workbench by scribing a few lines and filling them with paint. This will allow me to work with the cardboard template and figure out all my angles before I move on. Once I had a rough idea on cardboard, I transferred it to a piece of MDF and could start refining the final shape and design. After I figured everything out with the angles, the bolt locations, it was actually time to make this thing work. And I went with 3 quarter inch plywood as my material of choice. Plywood is very stable, it's strong, looks cool and modern, and I had a lot of it on hand. Basically, there are two major components of this decontamination station. The sawhorses and the top, which sits on the sawhorses, that holds the sprayer in place. So here I'm getting ready for the glue up and I'm actually sorting through all my leg pieces. When I ripped the plywood, I made sure that the grain direction on eight of them were running one way and the other eight, the grain direction was running in the opposite direction. This way, when I glue them together, it's going to make the legs much stronger and hopefully prevent them from warping over the years. So for every leg, I pulled one from each pile and glued them together. Threw on a bunch of clamps. Boom. At the table saw, I ripped one edge and then I moved the fence over a bit and ripped the opposite side so that they all have the final dimension of three and a half inches which is the same exact size as your standard 2x4 in case you're looking to make a set of them out of 2x4s. 
Now, I'm not gonna get into great detail about the angles and the process of making these sawhorses because I'm gonna be releasing a full build video on them very soon. So if this is something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments section below. And also let me know if you'd want to see a set of blueprints for this thing, because I've never done prints and I think this is a really cool design. It's strong for sure and you're going to be able to collapse it down fully, making it fully mobile so you can take it on job sites or anywhere else you'd like. After cutting the legs down to size of my miter saw, I drilled 3 8 holes at the drill press to accommodate the bolts. And then over at the bandsaw, I cut out the section where the saddle is going to fit into. This part is probably the biggest change from the horses that I saw on Pinterest. Whereas those you would need a strap at the bottom to support the outward forces, but on these the saddle has two dados that interlock into a double groove on the legs. And when the legs are separated or in the open position, the outward forces of the legs actually lock the saddle in and prevent the horses from racking outward. Next I set the horses on the floor and use the pencil to trace all the way around them. This gives me the perfect angles to make sure that they are perfectly flat as they sit on the ground. To support the legs some more, I decided to put a stretcher between them and this time I decided I'm going to cut the dado out at the table saw. I put in a couple of threaded inserts and use these 3 8 rockler knobs to secure the stretcher. So the use of these knobs is key in this construction because it allows all the pieces to be disassembled and collapsed together without having to use any tools. This station is going to be taken out in the field during trainings and I didn't want the soldiers to have to track down tools to set this thing up or take it down. So with the addition of some threaded inserts to the side, the stretcher and saddle can be attached to the side of the sawhorses when collapsed. With the horses fully assembled, it was time to strength test them. And what better way to see how much weight they can take is to be the guinea pig myself. Now I'm not going to tell you guys exactly how much I weigh because I love frozen pizza and ice cream like every day. And I'm not giving them up. So let's just say that they're pretty darn strong. Yes, sir. This is just this fuel for the soul. Oh my God, it's so good. With cream and <laughs> caramel. Roll some ice cream. Yummy, yummy in your tummy. But, oh, it's on your nose. It's, oh, it's on your cheek. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ah, I'll do it. Better? Oh. After making sure that my puppies were happy, I rounded over all the edges with a round over bit and sanded everything up to 220, and then I was ready for finish. Since this station is going to come in contact with water and the outside elements all the time, I decided to seal the wood with Total Boat's wood sealer before applying their spar urethane called Gleam. Total Boat is a longtime supporter of this channel, and I've used their epoxies on many projects. But what most people don't know is that they manufacture some of the best wood finishes on the market. I mean, they seal boats for crying out loud. So if it's going to seal somebody's million dollar yacht, then it's going to work perfectly on this decontamination station for our fine young and women serving our country. So thank you Total Bolt for supporting what I do. And if you guys want to check out the entire Total Bolt line of epoxies and finishes like Gleam, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. So Gleam is a spar varnish, which means that it's perfect for outdoor use. The first coat I thinned by 20% to flow a little bit better, and then the rest of the coats, which was three, I just went straight from the can with a cheap foam brush, and the results were spectacular. I'm always amazed at how finishes make a piece of wood just come to life, especially when you use a high gloss like this. Holy crap, I almost forgot. I got to make it COVID-19 compliant. Or at least so that the soldiers don't give each other a disease. They all have herpes and gonorrhea. Probably syphilis too. <laughs> yeah, I almost forgot. Since there's gonna be a lot of boogers and water flying all over the place, 
I need to make sure there's something separating them. The world is changing right now, and even my woodworking is being affected by it. Maybe even me. Hello, love. Alright, a couple of finishing touches, and I'm ready to show you guys what OC really feels like, and to test the station. Let's do it. You understand you're about to receive a level 1 OC contamination? Yes. Do you have any contacts? No. Are you wearing anything cosmetic on your face? No. Close your eyes, close your mouth. OC, OC, OC. Good, I gotta put this mask on now. I got blasted in the face a few times. This is the funnest part of the job, isn't it? This is it right here. <laughs> Soldiers got pain. A lot of fun. Thanks for playing. <laughs> Alright guys, so that's it. Now, maybe you can understand a little bit more about what these brave young men and women go through to protect our freedoms. Because it's not easy. I'm super proud of all the soldiers in my unit that went through this process. I can't truly explain what it really feels like, but if you can imagine your face being stuck in a raging fire for a couple of hours without being able to breathe right, that's kinda it. And I hope that this decontamination station helped them wash some of it off and ease the pain, cause there's nothing like it. So if you guys enjoyed this project, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. And if you really liked it, hit that subscribe and bell notification so you get notified next time I release a video. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I'll see you guys next time. He sprayed me. He, sp he sprayed me. Stupid flies. Today we will be discussing why there's so many bugs and mosquitoes in my shop. Yeah? I love my job. Oh, I feel like I got a major sunburn on my face. <laughs> Aftermath feel. You know, not as bad as I thought. I mean, yeah. my eyes still hurt and my face feels like it's on fire. Definitely Other not. than that, it's not that bad. I think you did pretty well. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Good job. <laughs>